So when we're talking about ratios, um, they don't actually tell us exactly how much of something we have. They just give us a relative comparison between um, two or three or four different objects or however many you have. So if we look at an example such as this, apples in a barrel are in the ratio of four to five green to red apples. This might help us illustrate what I'm talking about. What happens is if I've got a big barrel and it's full of apples, this means I could potentially have four green apples and five red apples in that barrel. But I could also have eight green apples and ten red apples. But they're still in a ratio that's the same as four to five. So eight to ten is the same as four to five. We always write the ratio in the most simplified form. So if I did have a barrel full of eight green apples and ten red apples, I would write that there's eight green to ten red, and then I'd have to think, oh, is there any common factors that I can use to reduce that? And you can divide both of those by two and you'd get down four to five. So we always write it in the simplest form possible. And so it just gives us this kind of idea of roughly how much compared to one or the other, who's got more of one to the other, but not exactly how many we have. So if I tell you that, again, a barrel has a ratio of four to five green apples, that could be four apples to five apples, or it could be 400 green apples to 500 red apples. We don't know how much unless they tell us, but we tell we can tell that what we call the ratio between. So when we write ratios, we always have to write them in simplest form, so we look for that common factor, such as taking 8 to 10 down to 4 to 5. But we also want to watch out for decimals as well, and if there's a decimal, we'll want to times to get rid of it. So if we take a look, um, there are 12 girls and 10 boys in the class. Write the ratio of girls to boys. So my order matters here. I'm looking at girls to boys. That means I want to put in girls and then the colon and then the number of boys. So I have 12 girls to 10 boys. And here I need to look for a common factor that I can use to simplify. So in this case, they're both divisible by 2. If I divide 12 by 2, I'll get down to 6. And if I divide 10 by 2, I'll get to 5. So that's my ratio of girls to boys, 6 to 5, in the simplest form. Here's another example. Susan spent $2.50 on cookies and $4 on cake. Write the ratio of the amount she spent on cookies to cake. And again, order matters. So we're going to put cookies first and then cake. So cookies is $2.50 and cake is $4. And again here, I want to think about getting rid of decimals. So, because um, there's not really any units in this either. So, uh, how can I get rid of $2.50? Well, if I times this by 2, I'll get $5. And if I times this by 2, I'll get $8. And instead of thinking about it in terms of dollars, I can just say 5 to 8. And that would be my simplified ratio. So again, if there's a decimal, you need to think about what you can times it by to turn it into a whole number. And then whatever you've done to one side, some of algebra, you need to do to the other side as well. Just as another example here, if I had like um, one point two five to three, well, 1.25 that's a quarter, so if I times by 4 on this side and times by 4 on this side, I might get there. So times in by 4. We get 5 to 12. And there we've got, again, a ratio that will work for us with no decimals, and then it's in the simplest form. So. Another example for us, Susan is making a dress. She spends three quarters of an hour cutting her fabric. So we're going to say cutting. That's three quarters of an hour. And she spends one and a half hours to sew it. So one and a half hours to sew. What is the ratio of her time spent cutting to sewing? So I want cut to sew. So I'm going to say three over four to one and a half. So similar to what we've been talking about, we need to get rid of fractions and decimals and get it in the simplest form. 
So what I'm going to look for for a fraction is there a number that I can times both the right and left hand side here to make it not a fraction anymore. Basically to get rid of um, the common denominator. Well, not the common denominator, but get rid of the denominators. So I could think of this as 3 over 4 and 1 and a half, well that's the same thing as 3 halves if we want to think about it that way. So if I look here, if I think about this, kind of like with algebra, here I'm dividing by 4, so the opposite of dividing by 4 would be timesing by 4. And if I times by 4 to both sides, I'm going to get myself to a situation that works. So if I do our timesing, 4 times 3 gets me 12 over 4. And here I've got, again, 12 times 3 gets me 12, in that case over 2. So I'm leaving the bottom the same. And then we can simplify these fractions. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 12 divided by 2 is 6, and that becomes our simplified ratio. So again, I looked at the bottom, and I'm looking for the, the lowest common multiple that both of these have. So if I times both sides by 4, um, I'll get 12 on top for the right hand side and 12 divided by 4 will get me to 3 and if I times the left hand side also by 4 I'll get 12 on top and divide by 2 you get to 6. So 3 to 6 and her cut to sew time. So um, when you're dealing with ratios again you want to write them in the simplest form so no decimals, no fractions and um, always look for a common factor to take out uh, when you're trying to get rid of a decimal or fraction, you'll be looking to times by a number to get rid of the, the denominator.